So we saw that you could use Taylor's theorem to put an error bound on some approximation. The other thing we can use Taylor's theorem for is to prove that a function actually equals its Taylor series. Now remember, we just created this thing and we looked at some graphs and it seemed like that if you took more and more terms of this, it was looking more and more like sine, right? We looked at that um, and it seemed to fit it farther and farther out. The question is, when you go to infinity, is it actually equals? Can I erase that question mark? Is it true that the function and the series are identically equal? And it turns out they're true, and how we can prove that is with Taylor's theorem. Um, remember, Taylor's theorem says your function's equal to your Taylor polynomial plus some error. What we really want to show is that as you as n goes to infinity, as you start to go using all of the terms, as n gets higher and higher and higher, if this term goes to zero, that means that at infinity, sine x is the Taylor series. So what we're going to attempt to show here is that the limit as n goes to infinity of our remainder equals zero. If we can show this, then we'll have shown that sine x is equal to its Taylor series. Because as you go to infinity, the polynomial becomes the series. And if that goes to zero, the function is the series. Now, I'm going to use sandwich theorem to do it. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm not going to show that the error goes to zero. I'm going to show that the size of the error goes to zero. The error could be positive or negative, and it could be flipping, right? Maybe at n equal 27, the error is positive, and n equal 28, the error is negative. We don't really care. We just want the size of it to go away, right, to go to zero. So that's what we'll show. And we're going to do this by way of a sandwich there. So what I want to do is write out what the remainder is for sine. So let's remind us here. What is, what is, uh, what does that look like? Now, in our original statement, this wasn't an x, right? When we first saw Taylor's theorem, we wrote a b there. That was for some specific value of x. I don't care about a specific value of x now. I want to show that this is true for all x. So I don't want to show that sine equals its Taylor series at 2. I want to show that sine equals its Taylor series everywhere. So I'm going to leave this as a variable x, so instead of b. So let's rewrite what Taylor's theorem says about that remainder. It's the n plus 1 derivative at c over n plus 1 factorial. Um, b minus a, but I'm saying x now, so x minus a to the n plus 1 in absolute value. And um, this is going to vary, right? As you take derivatives of sine, it's going sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. So this part, I can't really say what, what derivative we are at. Uh, but there is a natural bound here that's going to make life easy. So I'm going to set up an inequality because I'm going to do a sandwich theorem. So the nice thing about an absolute value is no matter what it is, I know that it's greater than or equal to 0. Right? So I can put a lower bound on that, no problem. And now I'll fill in what I can here. So the n plus 1 derivative at c, I'm just going to write that as n plus 1 derivative at c over n plus 1 factorial. But I do know a, right? If you remember, when we created this series, x minus a, our a was 0. We centered e to the x at 0, sine at 0, cosine at 0. So a is 0, so this ends up just being x to the n plus 1. Okay. So now let's think about this. What, what can I do here? I want to put an upper bound on that, but it could possibly be four different things, right? The derivatives of sine go cosine, negative sine, negative cosine, sine, and then they repeat. But all four of those, sine, cosine, 
negative sine, negative cosine. If you take their absolute value, now you're just down to sine or cosine right? in absolute value. And we know that those only go from negative 1 to 1. So in absolute value, they just go from 0 to 1. So no matter which function we're looking at, which derivative of sine, and no matter where we're looking, we could say it's always less than or equal to 1. Right? And that's because sine and cosine are bounded above by 1. Their absolute value is bounded above by 1. So I'm going to say that this is less than or equal to 1 over n plus 1 factorial x to the n plus 1. And now I have exactly what I want because I've sandwiched our error magnitude between 0 and this expression. And remember, um, I guess this should, x could be negative, so let's put an absolute value there. That's inside an absolute value. This is really that statement from theorem 5, right? x to the n over n factorial goes to 0. So the limit trivially as n goes to infinity of 0 is 0. And the limit as n goes to infinity of absolute value of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial is 0 by theorem 5. Our error is trapped between those two, so by sandwich theorem, the magnitude of our error is 0 as well. So that means that we can finally get rid of that question mark. Sine of x does equal the series. The error goes to 0. Right? We just showed that as you use higher and higher Taylor polynomials, this term gets closer and closer and closer to 0. So when you reach infinity, when you use infinitely many terms, you don't reach infinity, but as you approach infinitely many terms, you approach no error, so they're converging on one another. So that means that anywhere, mathematically, you're dealing with the sine function, it is legitimate to replace it with its Taylor series because they are identical. And they are identical everywhere. So, you know, we created this only at zero, right? We made this by matching derivatives at zero, our a was zero. But it turns out you can go as far away from that as you like, and the two are still equal because the error, now it might take longer, the farther from zero you are on the graph, it might take longer and longer for this to get small, but it'll eventually get as close to zero as you like. So if you want to approximate sine with one of its polynomials, you can find a polynomial that gives you an error as small as you like, because the error gets closer and closer to zero. So if you need to approximate sine of 6.38 and you want an error of 10 to the negative 50th, there is a polynomial that'll do that for you. It may require a lot of terms, but you can do it because you know now that the error is headed to zero. Um, now, we could also quickly do this for cosine. Think about the argument I just made here. It really boiled down to this statement and the key was that the derivatives of sine are all less than 1 in absolute value. Well, guess what? The derivatives of sine and the derivatives of cosine are the same functions. Right? Derivative of cosine is negative sine, negative cosine, sine. So it's the same four functions again. So you could make this exact same argument. Actually, you don't have to change a single word in this argument except for cosine there. And you could prove the exact same thing. So this is the exact proof for cosine as well. So now, from this point forward, we will assume that we now know that sine equals its Taylor series and cosine equals its Taylor series, and we are free to replace the function with its series anytime it's convenient for us. Um, what I'd like to show next is the same thing for e to the x. e to the x is a similar argument, but it does break into two cases. So I can't reuse this argument exactly, but this is the exact argument for sine or cosine.